Well, welcome to Misabi Range Community and Technical College. It's a cold day in January 2009, but uh, we're anxious to start school. We optimistically call this spring semester. This uh, part of our college's campus is located in Virginia, Minnesota. And here you can see some of the maintenance people taking care of the snow for us. Virginia, Queen City, the Iron Range in northern Minnesota. Welcome to the college. I'll take you in and show you my office. Now this is my office, C-153. And that's me. A beautiful Masabi Range Community and Technical College. Some plaques, pictures, lots of maps. I love maps. And I have my own little library here. Probably my favorite map in my entire office is right here. It is a map of Lake Superior and the surrounding area. Definitely one of my favorite natural world features. So I'll talk more about that in some of our course notes as we go throughout the semester. Well, good morning. I'm Dr. Kelson, Aaron Kelson, and I'm happy to be your instructor for this semester. This course is Conservation of Natural Resources, and our text is Exploitation, Conservation, Preservation, a Geographic Perspective on Natural Resources Use by Susan Cutter and William Renwick. I'm going to talk about this text in a, in a minute and talk about our course in general. Uh, basically, uh, we're looking at conservation issues around the world and we're looking at why are the issues where they take place. Hence the geographic perspective. As we read the text and interact with one another this semester, you'll be having discussions with your fellow students, you'll be answering some questions and taking some time tests online as well as producing either a book report or a video project if you're comfortable with technology. And I hope that we can help one another out this semester, have an enjoyable time, a uh, very positive learning experience and I'm here to help. I'm always anxious to help and answer questions and let's let's just enjoy the class together so please let me know what I can do to help you along the way one other aspect of the course that I'd like to emphasize are the course notes I add these in the course outline and they are my way of emphasizing points that are especially relevant and I may have some personal context some current events included in those course notes so Please make sure you read those. And now that we have this wonderful new, new way of interfacing with one another through video technology, I plan to add some video components to a lot of those course notes as we go throughout the semester. And in fact, I think we'll, we'll start today with adding a, an important video component. We're going to take a little journey right outside the college and look at a very important conservation issue that has a geographic context that which will be especially relevant to most of the people taking this course. And I want to do this to emphasize that we don't necessarily have to go to the Amazon Basin or Equatorial Africa, the Australian Outback or one of the polar ice caps in order to understand something about the geography of conservation issues. We're going to look right, side, right outside our own door and try to have some understanding there. So let's take a little trip together and have some fun. This is Rotary Park, Virginia, and this is a memorial to the world's largest white pine sawmill. 
And in the background we can see Silver Lake. And we'll walk over there and take a closer look at that. Right here we see a plaque honoring the great white pine sawmills that used to be located here on Silver Lake in Virginia, Minnesota. And it's probably hard to read the plaque, but it does say that um, the sawmill was processing more than 300 million board feet of lumber a year. And by 1929, the last of the great white pine forests were cut down in this area, and the sawmill was closed. Uh, I'm going to take uh, another look at Silver Lake here. And you can see, even though today is January 7th, 2009, it's obviously quite cold out here, the, uh, some of the water is still open. And that's because the water is running through the power plant there, and this open water is somewhat of a haven for waterfowl during the winter. And it'll often show up here when the rest of the lakes are frozen. Well, it's quite a journey getting over to this memorial for you today. You can see my tracks in the snow. I've had a lot of snow this year. Well, just a minute ago, we were at Silver Lake in Virginia. And we were talking about the great sawmills that used to be there and the great white pine forest that used to be in this area. I now uh, am probably only about a half a mile from uh, where we filmed last. Actually, right behind Masabi Range Community and Technical College, which you can see. And I'm on a snowmobile trail that uh, is behind the college, and I often walk here in the summer. Don't often come here in the winter, but I want to show you something on this trail. I'm going to walk over to that, and maybe I'll pretend to be like Survivor Man and film myself walking for a minute. It's a new experience making a film for my classes. It's actually a lot of fun. We'll see if it can be educational at the same time. All right, a little bit further to go, and uh, I'll show you what I was talking about. Okay, we're coming into this small stand of trees, and this is what I want to show you right here, this tree. It is a white pine tree. Nice looking tree. It's probably 35 feet tall or so. Very healthy. It uh, doesn't have any of the white pine blister rust at this point, so hopefully it'll stay that way. And it is the only white pine that I've been able to find in this on this trail. So this is an area that at one time was completely covered by giant white pine forests. And now we have some white pine, but not nearly as many. So the question is, why not? Why don't we have as many as we used to have? And yet, uh, obviously, they're still able to flourish in this area, but they are not the dominant species in the forest anymore. That's a good question. And that's one of the questions we're gonna consider in our class this semester. Uh, much of the forest here now, rather than being white pine or large Norway pine, it's black spruce and also uh, aspen. And here's a nice paper birch tree, one of my other favorites. So this is a nice little trail to walk down. And I got to tell you about one thing I saw here about three years ago walking on this trail walking over to the park which is just to the north of me and uh, in the mud below my feet I saw some gigantic moose tracks so that was interesting to think about big moose right behind the college I sure would have loved to have seen that but at the moment my fingers are freezing so I'm probably gonna end this video and uh, we'll continue on other days